where I am. Welcome to PowerCast with PC. Your presence is more important than even our presentation. So, Father, we thank you that you have already done a significant amount of what you desire to do for us today. Now, Father, we pray that you do the rest through your word. Speak to us this morning. Speak clearly. Speak precisely. And speak specifically to where we are. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If y'all was here, I would tell you, you could be seated in the house of the Lord. So if you're standing up at home, you may be seated. I, I saw a memory come up on my Facebook the other day with a picture based upon a message that I preached a couple years ago. And it was the picture of a orange on the outside, which really represents how most of us look. We look good. We look whole. We look healthy. Some of us, we look saved, sanctified, whatever that looks like. You look like it. But on the inside, we're layered like an onion. That, that we are not always who we present ourselves to be. And that the truth is, for many of us, the most difficult scripture in the Bible is I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. It is not the Christ that is the issue. It is the I can that becomes the biggest problem. And the I can is what all of us are going to have to deal with that I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will force all of us to deal with it in an aggressive way this month because what we can't do is move forward with the spirit of I can't. I'll say that again. We, we will not be able to move forward with the spirit of I can't. We will not be able to accomplish our goals with the spirit of I can't. We can't hear the word of the Lord correctly through the lens of I can't. We can't think the word of the Lord correctly with the mentality of I can't and we can't love people with the love of the Lord with a love that is saturated in I can't and I believe that there are a whole lot of people who simply come to church because they believe God can do but they struggle with what they can't do and so I started off our morning morning word on Monday with this thought and I want to start our time together this morning with this thought what God do you serve? Do you serve the God of surplus or do you serve the God of not enough? And the answer is not in your response verbally. The answer is in how you live perpetually. Every day of your life, you got to ask yourself, am I living like I serve a God who has more than enough or am I living like I serve a God who can only provide through a paycheck? reason why this is so important, because all of us are, are going to have to answer this question, and that is, what is keeping me from really receiving what I say I believe? See, we know that we serve a God that makes all things possible. Scripture is very clear that with man things are impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Another gospel writer says it even more clearly, that all things are possible to them who believe. And I don't think for one second that I'm talking to people who don't believe. I believe that you believe. I just believe that you believe incorrectly. I believe you believe that the God of heaven and the God of earth can do anything. I just don't think you understand that the God of heaven and the God of earth is on the inside of you. And that he is only truly activated, not just when we have a relationship with him, where we lift hands and sing soft songs, but he is activated when we give him the highest form of our worship, which is trust. I'll say that again. He is truly activated when we give him the highest form of our worship, which is trust trust. And what I want to deal with today is what is affecting and infecting your ability to trust God. Why is it that we have more trust in the government than we have in God? 
Why is it that we have more trust in the companies that we work for than in God? Why is it that we have more trust in people than we have in God? And let's go a little bit deeper since we're already there. Why is it, hear me, that we have more trust in unhealthy things than we do in healthy things? I, I, I can tell you every, just about every day, someone says something that reveals for me how much distrust, watch this, that we have in healthy things. So if your doctor prescribes a prescription which tells you your kidneys will fail but your liver will work, you take it. Someone gives you a natural herb or something of that nature, and the first thing you ask is, how much of it can I take? Is it safe to take? Can I take it? Because hear this, we have an unhealthy relationship with health. We go to the doctor because we are sick, but we don't deal with ourselves from the perspective of how to live a healthy life. So we go through our lives in a very unhealthy way. Watch this. Wanting God to give us surplus where we feel like there is insufficiency. And we put all of our eggs in the basket of what we don't have, assuming, expecting, and hoping that if I just get what I don't have or what I perceive to not have, if I can just get that, then I'll be good. So the broke people come to church saying, God, just give me some money. Because if I get some money, I'll be good. But then you get $100 and you play every number in your head and you don't have it. Because there is this component to trust that I don't think we really understand. That we are tested with our trust by what we have. God does not, God does not judge our trust by what we do with a whole lot. The Bible gives us a very clear spiritual principle. Those who are faithful over a little bit, a few things, those are the ones who will be made ruler over much. Didn't say those are the ones who will get a lot. It says those are the ones who will be made ruler of a lot. That really implies that sometimes God will let you control what you don't have to own. That, that's another message uh, for another day. And, and, and the question is, the question is, what is keeping you from really trusting God? And this particular passage of Scripture has a whole lot in it that I want to try to get through in about the next 17 to 18 minutes. And I know I'm not going to be able to get into it in depth, but perhaps maybe in the morning work, I can go into each and every one of these things uh, individually. But the first thing that we got to deal with is the Spirit of the Lord. Because the Spirit of the Lord is transcendent. One of the purposes of the Spirit of the Lord is it takes you there before you get there, so you don't have to worry about getting there. I'll say that again. It'll take you there before you get there, so you don't have to worry about getting there. This is why the scripture tells us that, that, that we've got to learn how to cast down every thought, every imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Well, what is the knowledge of God? The knowledge of God is how God sees me in comparison to how I am right now. So the purpose, one of the purposes rather, of the Spirit of the Lord is I can be right here, I can be sick and see myself healthy. I can be right here broke and see myself rich. I can be right here lonely and see myself with companionship. Because the purpose of the Spirit of the Lord is it can take you there before you get there so you don't have to worry about getting there. In other words, if you can see it in your mind, you can have it. 
I said, if you can see it in your mind, you can have it. And I know that sounds real simple and elementary, but I just freed seven people who just been wondering why they keep seeing themselves in a different place. That is because that is the spirit of the Lord trying to wake something up on the inside of you to let you know that I'm taking you there now so that we can get there physically. And I'm taking you there so when things get crazy physically, you don't question whether you can get there, that you have a blessed assurance that all the hell that I'm going through right now is because God has taken me there. And I wish I could define what your there is, but let me just tell you, there is better than where you are right now. There is more money than what you have right now. There is better health than what you have right now. There is more peace than what you have right now. And I wish I had somebody who could testify that in this season of my life, I'm tired of staying here. I'm ready to go there. Oh, but there's some layers. There's some layers that if we don't identify them properly, some of us, some of us struggle with all five of them. Some of us struggle with two or three of them. Struggle with, some of us may struggle with one of them. Many of us don't want to acknowledge that we have a problem with any of them. And the problem is, is that when the word of the Lord comes, it's filtered through these layers. So that's why 100 people can be listening to me say God can do anything. And one person here is he going to pay a bill. And another person here is he going to give me a house. And another person here is I'm going to have a neighborhood. And another person here is I'm going to have a city. Because how, hear me, do these layers affect the spirit of the Lord in my life? Because contrary to popular belief, God is not going to knock you upside your head and force you into your future. Your future is a matter of choice, not chance. It is a decision and not a coincidence. You are not going to accidentally fall into where God is taking you. You're going to have to make a conscious decision to look generational curses, to look naysayers, to look yourself to look negativity in your in the face and say, I know what you look like, but as for me and my house, I'm going to serve the Lord. And listen, watch this. Y'all ready for this? Serving the Lord looks like success. Serving the Lord. <laughs> serving the Lord looks like exceeding and abundantly above all that you could ask, wish, think, dream, or imagine. Now watch this. The reason why trust is so important is because the only way to get there is you can't earn it. You got to obey. I'm going to say it again. You can't earn it. You have to obey. Trust requires you to obey yourself into the next season. That's what November is about for us. We are about to, on Thanksgiving Day, literally obey God into the next season of our ministry. And some of you, when I said $1,000, the first thing that came to your mind was, he ain't talking to me. And the reason why you said that is because you don't see the God that can give it to you. Or you don't see the God that will let you give it and not give it back to you. Press down. Shaking together or running over. Or you don't see yourself as the person who can receive it. And so as a consequence, we got to deal with this thing. Now let me tell you something. Without understanding your future shows up in your now and it looks stupid. It looks dumb. It looks crazy. I'm going to say it again. Without an understanding, the future shows up in your now, and it looks crazy. It don't make no sense. Okay, what do you mean? What do you mean? I, I, I remember when I was around 15 or so, and I, I went to, it was a bank called First Union, and my grandma took me to get a bank account, and I went and got this bank account, and they gave me two things. They gave me a, a, a debit card, and they gave me a checking account. And my grandma said, 
you need to learn how to balance your checkbook. So she took me through, this is what you do when you write a check. Because her generation wrote checks. And I said, well, what am I supposed to do with this card? And she was like, don't worry about that. You, you don't have to worry about that because that, that don't really work right. You, you worry about balancing this checkbook. And so I remember going.